Okay, now that we've passed the, the eye part of uh, the cranial nerves, we are over the hump. We're on the home stretch, my friends. So we're on to the trigeminal nerve. And the trigeminal nerve is carrying all the sensory information from the face, from the oral cavity, uh, from the anterior meninges, et cetera. And uh, the, the trigeminal nerve is split into three divisions, the ophthalmic, which critically and importantly includes the uh, eye, the cornea, the maxillary, the upper teeth, and the, and the mandibular, the, the lower teeth. Um, the ear is shared between this ridiculous number of, of uh, nerves that are carrying it, v, uh, trigeminal, facial, glossopharyngeal, vagus, and if that's not enough, the back of the ear is actually uh, innervated by uh, the second cranial, sec excuse me, the second cervical segment of the spinal cord. There is bizarrely no, there's no C1 sensory root. Um, Okay, so C2. Now, what can go wrong with the, uh, the trigeminal nerve? Um, mostly what goes wrong is, is what we've talked about are, are these issues such as um, tic de la rue or, or trigeminal neuralgia. Uh, it, the etiology of trigeminal neuralgia is a little unclear. Uh, one popular idea is that it comes from um, a virus infection, it can also be the result of a, of a compression, some kind of a compression from, from some um, treatable or, or excisable um, entity. The end result of it is a very bad dysesthesia. Uh, the trigeminal distribution is, is notable for having a lot of these very particular um, tissues that give rise only to noxious uh, or, or, or to painful perceptions. So for example, you can't tickle your, your dental pulp, your tooth pulp. You get what you get from the tooth, you get pain. You get pain or you get nothing. Uh, to a certain extent, that's true of the cornea, uh, a little bit less so, but mo most stimulation of the cornea results in pain. It's not as though you could say, oh, well, you're just brushing my cornea to the right or to the left. You don't have that kind of discriminatory power. What you get is pain. Um, the same thing with the nasal mucosa, and the same thing actually with the dura. So the dura is another important structure that is innervated by the trigeminal nerve. And uh, activity in trigeminal afferents that come from dura give rise to a, a, an experience that we call headache. A headache is essentially a dura ache. This is a problem in the, the uh, the afferents that are coming in from the dura are now firing way too much, and they converge with afferents that serve uh, more superficial structures, such as uh, your forehead, your, your neck muscles, and you get this perception of pain in your head. It's coming initially from the dura. The other uh, fun fact about, and, and I'll share this just very briefly, it, this is a fun fact, it doesn't really go wrong in people, but it is a delightful thing that goes right in people, um, is that along with innervating the chewing muscles, the trigeminal nerve, remember the trigeminal nerve is mostly sensory, but it has this component that is branchial motor. And that component has two types of muscle. One is the actual chewing muscles, and the other one is this tensor tympani, which is a middle ear muscle. And the tensor tympani, what it does is it, it stretches the, tensor, the tympanic membrane, which is also called the eardrum. What happens when you stretch a drum? What happens? Well, if you bang on the drum and you've stretched it, the frequency of the sound goes up. Same thing happens for us. If we stretch our tympanic membrane, the frequency of sound that's coming in is just gonna go artificially up. As we chew, we get, we hear other things, most importantly speech, because we're, our hearing, our auditory system is made for speech. And what we do is we elevate the pitch, the frequency of that speech. So it's easier to distinguish from our own chewing sounds. 
Okay, chewing sounds are very low in frequency. We stretch the membrane. Now you're banging on that drum, and what used to be at this frequency has jumped up to this frequency, and it's easier to distinguish this higher frequency sound from the sound of yourself chewing. So, fun little fact. We are now going to go on to the facial nerve uh, and the very important uh, issue of Bell's palsy.